be available for the phobias. Will be better if it is going for the X-Blade, but I feel like it is going to be the jungle. The only reason why this can work is because of the abyssal traps available for Etomax to speed up the Phobius. Otherwise, this will be a very slow jungle take, but we know the Phobius, if it gets to his ultimate, very strong contention around the turtle area. So this is now the battle of the House of Highlights versus the Venom of MPL Season 10. It's confirmed. It's a Fovius jungle, Bear Eisen. Yeah, again, uh, I'm excited to see how it unfolds, right? Even running with the Demon Slayer, the jungle emblem here. We did see Amon come up yesterday. Yep. Uh, and it, I know now it's also been played in other regional tournaments. Mm. So this is going to be exciting to see. Now, again, how does this work? How does it uh, synergize well? And Wolf already pointed out, it is going to work really well with Etu Max here yep. on the Selena. But you know, again, throughout the entirety of the game, how impactful will that Phobius alone be? We're gonna have to find out. It's, you can expect it during team fights. Very strong when it comes to objective taking as well, because you're still a tank. So you still pack up a punch around the turtle and the Lord area. And you also have your ultimate for control. You're so tanky as well, because if you're looking at Echo, there is not a lot of like, Phobius killers. You don't have the Esmeralda. In fact, Omega themselves have taken this Esmeralda, so you don't really have a way to take down Ryzen eventually. I think one great thing that Echo does have uh, to deal around this is just mobility, right? They have mobility with the Matilda, but they also have disengaged with the Julian. So they can kind of, if any time Omega decides to give the green signal the go here, they do have the tools that they need uh, to kind of get out disengage, buy a little more time, get those ultimates out, and then re-engage too, yeah. right? They have a lot of options there. Whereas, yes, Omega is quite tanky themselves. They do have tools as well. But I just think that mobility is an Echo's factor right now. It's the early game window of the Orcus trying to get on the first turtle. But on the positioning, it's Omega. Oh, yeah. Leading the borders. Flicker's gonna come in, wave the dragon right on Chak New. He tries to buy some time, but it's gonna be the first. A blood for Sanji. Whoa. And there you go. Deep into the jungle. Ryzen no goes. Can't get the kill though. So now it's Yaoi gonna be the focus. He's able to escape too. And there you go. Carl Teasy grabbing a kill for himself. Goes in again, and it's Ryzen that is punished. Double kill for Carl Teasy at two minutes and 40 seconds into the game. What a bad fight coming out from Omega, but it was started by Yaoi with this wonderful place. And then eventually Sanford outplays Ryzen, dashes, forces one of the demonic forces, and then he gets to his jab to get extra shields. Then he didn't dash afterwards, so there was no chase afterwards. And Ryzen was left in a spot where he cannot save Absolutely. himself. I don't think. Okay, Jack New actually is going to be fine. I thought they'd follow up on that. Already forcing a flaker from Ed to Max as well. Echo in a good controlling position here. Again, first turtle of the game has not been secured just yet. This might be the moment for Echo. Okay, this is not about objective. It's about the battle of this fight. Yowie. That falls. Taking the kill. Nobody falls. Nobody likes the turtle, bro. They don't need the turtle. Okay, Sandy going deep Ooh. into territory. Grabbing a kill with Finesse himself. Sanji with a quite impressive play there. Man, Echo just outplays Ryzen, not allowing the demonic force to be of impact for this game. They are taking out the other damage dealers from Omega. Mega is going to go ahead and call Kelrin in to help them out Nobody here. They don't Kelra. want to give this turtle up just oh yet. Carl Teasy, oh. that's going to be another kick. It's Kelra just dissected from the group. And now Renzio going to be focused here. Carl Teasy, the next one. Omega looking to get revenge as they bring down Carl Teasy. And now finally, the turtle can be worked on by Omega. A kill and they need this objective. The barangay still remains strong onto the defense. Something tells me Ryzen onto his ultimate it can be two sides of the coin. No. Could be a, it could lead him into a death trap or just gaining advance on how to counter them. Well, the thing with Phobius is that it isn't very strong until you get the Cloud of Destiny and then the stats are the Cloud of Destiny. So it takes a lot of time. And Yaoi has been so phenomenal in this Whoa. game. It's going to be a huge play here. Kelra is going to be the one to fall. This is the highlights of Yaoi right here that we're talking about, especially on this Cho pick. Time after time, I mean, the guy's got five assists already, five minutes into the game. My gosh, Echo is called the House of Highlights for a reason. They're just not stopping unless the risk is so calculated. Moment, it's a, what, five minutes? 
Five minutes and they just keep on attacking and just setting up traps for Omega. They know that they have the strength. Now, Chakna will have to defend his top lane, which means that the gold cart, gold siege minion will not be for Kelra, as Kelra has been completely bombarded. Already two deaths mm. on the Filipino Savage himself. And Echo are making a big distance between like Benny Cutie as well as Kelra's farm. Benny Cutie is already taking two lanes, which means that he will be so farmed up when the Lord fights do happen, comparably to Kelra. This is the calm before the storm. He's called the Typhoon for a reason, but one thing that they need to consider inside of Omega, yes, Keller needs more time to farm up with the minions, but one thing they need to worry about, we're seeing a Benny just shifting lanes, and they have Sanji as the Mathilde here. There's a lot of reinforcement, including the movement speed, so this covers up a complete control of the map inside of Omega. Yeah, if you, uh, again, going back to their name, right, Echo Express, the team that they drafted here is all about that express factor the mobility the positioning yeah. <laughs> advantage that they have a i mean train. We, we've literally yeah. seen it for the past six minutes and yeah. that's what we see smart omega just kind of struggling to keep up with it's like they're constantly trying to match the position match the mobility of this team from echo yeah look, look at this there's so many ways to close the gap there's so many initiations circling eagle wave the dragon with a flicker onto the choke paquito you also have carl tz on the joint with the knockups on the enhanced chain so many ways to actually start start the fight for echo wow this two team is just trying to make a risk and making a chance in every move just look at this using the turtle rise and just keep on poking this but one thing they're also considering is will they go for a counter for Omega? Who's yeah, we gonna pick oh. out of this group right here? Oh. There you go. They do secure it. It's gonna be secured by Ryzen, and now the fight breaking out here. Blazing through into the backside. At two max gonna be the focus of Benny Cutie. Yowie's still alive, but it's Ryzen. They get at two max, but a trade across the board as they find two of Echo. Smart Omega grabbing the turtle and the kills. You can see that Omega really fought so hard, and that we can already see how how much impact Ryzen has with his phobias during the team fights. Carl TZ melted against Omega when he was jumped upon by Ryzen with Kelra protecting him. But it was Chakdo with this wonderful wild charge to start the fight. Even after Ben Cutie as well as Yaoi already found the right angles, what happened was there was sort of an exchange of hostages where use an exchange of prisoners, I mean. Mm -hmm. It seemed like as Ben Cutie was exchanged for Kelra, but Kelra outplayed Ben Cutie eventually. And the damage dealt by Kelra was immense in that game. He found the targets that were stunned up as Etomax landed an, a nice arrow onto Carl TZ eventually. Once he was stunned up, Kelra dealt the damage with the shotgun. Right now, the mindset of these two teams is protect their gold laner. It's between Benny Cutie and Kelra right now. The gap, there's no such gap, only one gap. On the side of Omega, Kelra has more advantage in terms of clearing the lanes. But one thing also this is Echo capitalizing on is they have Sanji, they have Yaoi, but one thing they also need to consider is the damage right now. Omega is just building on momentum. Well, I mean, the thing is, Kelra was 0-2 at one point. He's managed to grab himself key pickups and at the same time grab the Malift Roar. So now he's in a good position to actually just provide that burst, provide that damage that really is what is needed from a Beatrix pick here. So already, it's pretty even across the board in, in terms of space, a tower each, but okay, that's actually not gonna go down. No. It's held on by one HP, yeah. literally, in the top side. So now this is crucial because now the first Lord of the game has come up. Oh. It's interesting to say that there, there have been only two turtles so far because of how late they, <laughs> both teams were during the first turtle. <laughs> they don't mind <laughs> the turtle or what, yeah. so. It's all they're about the kills. E they're using the objective as traps all throughout. Okay, for Omega they have a they have a hero to play the offside lane, which is the Esmeralda. We can see the turtle fight, the Lord fight, the Lord dance actually being started by Benny Cutie. He is holding on to the Lord, and Omega knows this for sure. How will they approach it? They are gonna can. play off map. Wait. Might be too fast. <laughs> I mean, whoa! A great decision there from Echo. They're like, Benny Cutie, just work on the Lord. It was Carl TZ just kind of sitting there zoning out Ryzen. Ryzen didn't really have that tankiness to actually get into position. So, in a way, free Lord there for Echo. My God. It's the perfect way to just play with the minds of Omega. They have two counter initiations just now. 
to just keep on poking on the mid lane. There's a there's a lord marching down bottom. They should be fine. Yeah, they should be fine. Yaoi, for the first time we see him fail an in initiation. But you see the kill intent coming out from Echo. When Kelra showed himself damaging Yaoi in there, Matilda coming up from Sanji immediately gets into the zone where he can pop the Circle Eagle if he wants. And as soon as Kelra saw that happening, he backed out as well. So both teams just understanding each each other's oh, strengths. Look at that. Speaking of strength, how does Benny Cutie with a peel and poke from Chakla and take a tower down? So that's the thing with Claude, right? Is you, you'd be surprised that when he has just these, I mean, even a couple items, right? The yeah. amount of hope that he can just whittle down a tank like Chak New Year. And Chak New doesn't have anything to do yeah. about it. He's just taking those bullets and just yeah. has to go recall, gives up a tower there on the bottom side. So what we're seeing from uh, the composition of Echo, which is going to be great versus Kelra, is that Carl TZ opted to go for a full magic damage build, which means that even after the Wind of Nature pickup by Kelra, still a lot of like additional damage source that can take out Kelra if he does pop the wind of nature so that's going to be called TZ did the damage oh. rise and caught oh. so Carl quickly TZ just forcing out resources now on the side of Omega Echo is just onto the express back new gonna get what? canceled here but the air arrow does land I don't think they can follow up at all though oh. Kelra yeah. though Trying to find an angle, but he gets caught out in a bad position and punished right away here. Sanji with a play, and now the rest. Renzio gonna be the next target. Do they follow up? The flicker comes in. Sanford on the hunt, but he can't catch Renzio just yet. He's gonna try to cut him off. The jab it? is out. Another one, the one, two. Has Sanji there to back him up. Falling Star oh, Moon no, no. comes down. Still two versus one on the bottom side. The rest of the team now crashing down, and that's Renzio that is taken out. A good buy time for Renzio as well. Just clearly getting Echo in a different direction to save him. Now Sanji with a mini play that when he dodged the Falling Star Moon. That actually is a. A uh, great play coming out from uh, Sanji because what could have happened is that Ryzen, oh sorry, Renzio would have more shields to work with since he's able to hit his shots, but Echo prevented that from happening. But the bigger play was the kill onto Ryzen. Now they will have a stronger contention around this Lord area. The Lord Dance is going to be in favor of Echo unless Omega says otherwise. They will be setting up top lane, clearing that out. Kelra already poking. And Yaoi knows this. Okay, Yaoi's already gonna push Kelra back. Gets the way of the dragon off the rest of the team to follow up. Can't get the kill just yet. Blazing doing to the backside. They find that two max. They find Jack New. No way. Demonic oh. force is coming oh. out. The Filipino Savage is still alive. Surviving for now. Can they oh. even this one out? It's a killing spree for Carl TZ. And now it's a dangerous two versus two. Up on the Lord, but they'll oh, get God. that. Carl TZ punishing another, and that's the signal to start up the Lord as Ryzen has to go back to base. What a wonderful set of events for both teams as when Kelra popped his ultimate with the Renner, we called it. Yaoi knew where he was, and Yaoi did not hesitate. Conceal play, going for Kelra, forcing that out, eventually followed up by the circling eagle but you gotta have to give it to omega they still manage kelra still held his ground got two kills before going down but carl tz and benny cutie combining for baiting out omega as well as dealing the damage onto the right targets carl tz knows even with the esmeralda tank tankiness you have the damage that is the reason why you pick up the julian and you go for your full damage build yes you can tear down even the strongest tanks like esmeralda echo Echo Nexion is up and ready. Looking back on the keys to victory number two. Make the roaming difficult for Omega. It was Yaoi just making all the zone outs and looking for a proper opening for Omega. For Echo rather, but now it's the Lord just bashing through the first last hour in the base. No assault on base, a mid turret still gonna be worked on here. Does it go down? They hold on to it, but look at the damage from still Carl Easy. They still hold on to it Ooh. for now, so no base turrets down just yet. With Benny Cutie pushing on the Ooh. bottom side. My Whoa. goodness, you can't forget 
about Kelra on this Beatrix. So now with Sanji down, Omega could possibly make some plays here, try to get some more space on the map. <laughs> Let's get back to the instant replay, Wolf. We are going it's to mission see Mission impossible. Arrow hits onto Sanji, as you can see, then rise and pokes him with the Astro's eye. And Kara knows this. He does have a, the orange buff as well, so he will do so Ooh. much damage in there. As you saw, combination of items as well as the orange buff. Now he's going to be even scarier with that, with those kind of pokes because he recently just picked up the Heptasis, which is a great bursting kind of, a, of an item. So you'll imagine during the Lord Dances, nobody should be hit by Kelra's Renner's ultimate. I think it's called Renner's... Shot apathy? Apathy, apathy yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renner's so, apathy. Just to go back yeah, on because Kelra. because he doesn't care. Oh, just as that, we've Three seen bars. Kelra just becoming the okay. vision for Omega. The damage burster, the, the sniper, yo, the savage. Yo, yo, he goes right in, gets the way of the dragon off, but he's the one to fall. The follow with the blazing duet. Chak through the next one. Benny Cutie could be in trouble oh here. God, and they're still fighting. It's a double kill for Sanji, but it's now again a two versus two. And Carl Teasy is there. With that damage on the Julian pick, we're gonna disengage. Stashing. Renzio has to back they're off walking. here. This is a tough situation. It's two versus two. Can they defend their base? They might oh. lose a tower, but right now, Omega on the defense. Echo just broke out. A pandemonium against Omega. Oh. How can they be able to defend this? Nobody's here. dashing. No one goes in, Chak, you looking for the wild charge, does find it, Jump. has Ryzen there to help him out. Here comes Renzio and two Max, circling you, gonna come out to try to help him. Carl is still alive for now, Arrow doesn't oh. land the oh. outplay from Carl TZ as they grab another kill, making Omega take the mistakes. Oh my gosh, back and forth and back and forth, how do you take this game? Omega and Echo is not stopping! My god, Sanji also played this well. I mean, surely we can highlight Carl TZ and his heroics. Wonderful play, enhanced chains, enhanced... I mean, eventually enhanced sword to get out with the concentrated energy. But my oh my, Sanji actually, when, Car when Carl TZ dashed, he also dashed as well with the Guiding Wind. Which meant that when Ryzen eventually jumped, since it happened almost at the same time, Instead of going on to Kartizi, Ryzen jumped into the Matilda. And then afterwards, he popped the Winter Truncheon to buy more time. That was so clutch coming out from Sanji. And even as we can say that it was Kartizi who made the highlight plays, you cannot deny the fact that Sanji saved him in a more creative manner than you would expect. Sanji, this kid, just keeps on proving himself worthy in the sight of Echo. The connection, the double Arrow. tag connection! Oh, the damn it though, they find Carl TZ! Now it's Echo on the run, the Lord has been worked on! Smart Omega looking to capitalize on this. Ryzen might be a little bit too overextended, but right now they're happy with the one, they get the Lord. They lose two, actually three, base turrets. Yeah, talking about push here for Echo. It's just gaining control over the Equilibrium all on the lanes. They don't wait for Carl Teasy, but now it's Omega's time to put their feet back on the defense. It's all about how you deal the damage oh. and now you're oh. safe. Oh. oh my goodness, at two max. Getting a little iffy there. Sanford definitely has the damage in these gloves. So everybody's going to go back. This is just once again a reset. As we yeah. wait for the next big objective, the Lord, for this game, we're almost at 20 minutes in. So the question, too, the the the, nat the natural question, whenever time Smart Smart Omega is playing, is what about those Omega timers? Does that still apply Will here? Will it make it to Man, win the wolf? I think that you, no matter what happens, you have to always think about Omega timers, man. That's just how they are. It, it, they, <laughs> They always reach to this point, Ooh. and they always prevail in the end. And yeah. Chakno, as well as Etomax, they have their comfort com uh, composition. With this duo of the Grok and the Selena, equally strong in the early stage and the late stages, equally as impactful. And it won't matter how many times Etomax misses if he gets that one shot. Like, for example, when we saw it on to Carl Tizi and Benny Cutie, gonna be able to burst down anyone so no matter what happens omega timers are a threat 
Yeah. They have their comfort Look heroes at right now. How right. Will they do it? right now. Like he is going right. to find Kelra on the top side of the map. He does find Kelra, but he's not. Doesn't have the follow up. Benny Cutie seen. now there. Immortality on Kelra. It's going to be pot. Carl TZ has gone oh. down. And look oh at the God, damage. That is the big damn coming out from the Filipino Savage as three fall from the Echo Express. And now Yawi and Sanford on the run. And these are the Omega Timers we were just talking about as now they push down the mid lane. Lord is now up. Does Smart Omega just take it to the base? Call an Woo! ambulance, but not for me, says Kelra. Pops the immortality, sells it. And now he has got the brute force breastplate to tag through. Even Haskell has picked up eventually the middle of the fight. My, My gosh, God. you feel the, the Filipino savage? Yeah, they we, get kicked into the base here. No They're going to try to turn this one around, but they can't because Kelra's still up. And that's going to be the... Whoa. That's going to be the game no right Whoa. here, but it's Carl TZ and it's it defending, Whoa. and he does it, looking for the Maniac, and he grabs it, and it's Omega with the blunder, 21 minutes into the game. A scream and a symphony of cheers, Omega missing the hits onto the base of Echo, and hands chains to the base, Omega. We're too anxious, and they have let go. And it's Renzo oh. versus three. There's not much he can do but try to buy as much time, but that's not going to be enough. And in a turnaround, Carl TZ defends the base and helps Echo take game number one. How do you explain this? How? From 100 to zero. Great place. And then a big blunder. This is why you watch Omega Games, man. No matter what happens, a bomb is going to explode.